This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, Happy New Year and welcome to the 2014 version of uh, Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. My good friend Dave Riccio is not with me today, so I've got uh, my other good friend. I've got two, I guess. <laughs> my other good friend Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service is here to help while Dave is gone. And uh, as always, we are here every single Saturday from 11 to noon right here on 92.3 KTAR. And our whole goal of being here every weekend is to, to help you. This is your show. So, uh, you know, we just want to have you have a better overall car experience, a repair experience. Maybe you're buying a new car and have a question, not sure what, what to ask or what to talk about. Maybe you got the list of uh, repairs that you need when you went into the shop. So just give us a call. If you want to participate in the show, don't be shy. You can call us at 602-277-5827, 602 277 K-T-A-R, and we're even uh, doing texting. You can text questions, comments, whatever you want at 411-923, and we can, we can play that way too. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, even though Dave's not here, I guess we'll go ahead and do a little factor fiction, but I'm not going to play the little funny reverbed factor fiction deal like he likes to do. Uh, open phones as always, and, and maybe a New Year's resolution when it comes to your car. Maybe... Uh, Maybe something you're going to do for your car or, uh, I don't know, just uh, a particular thing you want to do or just take care of your car better in general. We'll talk about that. And, uh, you know, I'm looking out the window here. It's still a little cool outside, but I'm watching these TV monitors and... Uh, <laughs> Burr, it's cold back east. Well, you know, Tim, you're from... Uh, Connecticut. What, what about you, Tim? You've been you're you're what's your background? You're from Connecticut. Yeah, been in the automotive business. What? Tell oh, me. 20, uh, thirty plus years. Uh, started back in uh, Connecticut, where it's freezing cold there, and um, it's beautiful here today. Uh, wonderful, wonderful weather. And uh, yeah, I started on the part side of the business, and then I met Matt back in '95, and I'm this is uh, going on my 17th year at the shop, and uh, the shop is uh, 19 years January 2nd. Yeah, yeah, we've had some. Uh, yeah, so Tim, you had your 16th year at Virginia Auto Service, and then January 2nd was uh, was the day. That's the anniversary. So we we just started our 20th year uh, in downtown Phoenix, which you know it's exciting because you know when I started, it was you know I was a mechanic, I was a tech, and uh, was in between jobs, and just knew I wanted to do it. And, and thank God, count our blessings, everything's been good and, yeah. and neither uh, of us had kids and now we have kids <laughs> and now we've seen our some of our customers kids that were kids when we started now are driving and we're working on their cars well yeah, yeah that's, it's, a, it's a it's a great thing you it, know it's neat because we have a lot of those where the kids weren't driving and then maybe the kid graduated to dad's car and dad got a new car and now that kid drove that car through high school and college and and now we're seeing them come back and they've got their new car and yeah. even some of them have kids and getting married yeah. so it's it's really neat. That's the the nice transition. Well, and it's the relationship. You know, Dave and I are constantly preaching get a relationship with your car guy, with with the shop, with the whoever's there. Familiar faces are always nice, and that's one blessing that we've had at the shop with uh, you know the technicians and everybody is we've we've got a lot of good tenure there. So uh, that's one thing to look at. I think when you're a customer looking for a shop. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's nice, you know, with the techs being there. One of them has long, been there as long as I've been there, and 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 it's just a great thing. It's a great thing to see the to see the 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 people come back and then bring their kids in, and then they, like I said, they grow up, and now they're bringing their cars in, their parents' cars that they inherited. It's really nice. Yeah, it it, it it's good. It's it's a lot of fun. We were looking at uh, customer base the other day and looking back at customer numbers and just looking at Robert and I were at the counter yesterday and just seeing some of the different names and. And the customer numbers and how long they've been around. It's really, really neat. So, uh, New Year's resolution for your car. Um, should you have one? I think so. I probably need one. I mean, I sometimes it feels I work so much. I'm here on the weekend and running around with kids. It looks like I live in my car. And <laughs> it's sometimes, you know, we have a car coming to the shop and it's filled with all this stuff. And we're going, gosh, look at these slops. How they do it? And I go walk in my car. And I'm like, oh. 
I should be standing in the mirror when I say that, you know. So, so what do you think, Tim? What would be your New Year's resolution for your car? Maybe clean, maybe clean out the trunk. <laughs> yeah, get all that stuff out of there. You know, in case you do have a problem, you gotta get that tire out of there, and you don't have to worry about that when you're on the side of the road. Uh, the stuff in the back, behind your back seat, that uh, has been accumulating there. Maybe you'll find a shirt that you have that you wanted to wear <laughs> for New Year's, and you're like, um, it's oh, there it was behind my. Right. Behind my seat. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, you know, and that's true. We used to, did towing for a while, and when I started the towing company, I was actually out driving a tow truck and changing tires, and, and fortunately, fortunately don't have that anymore. But I wasn't planning on going here, Tim, but you go – I don't know how many times we had to go on the side of the road. You can see it going up and down the 51 every day. Someone's getting their tire changed, and it looks like they're unloading from moving to get the spare tire out. So that would be a good one, cleaning it. You know what I need to do? I just need to get my car washed. And I think I have, like, the case of the cobbler's kids. At the shop, we we wash every single car we work on. <laughs> my truck is, never gets washed. Yeah, it's so, a little dirty. I so, didn't know. I didn't realize it was white until once we once you got it washed. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> so uh, you know, the big one I think because we've seen some preventable breakdowns in the shop over the last several weeks, and the the way that that people typically think of, I'll just get an oil change. So maybe if you're driving right now, take a peek up in that left hand corner of your windshield. And see what the mileage says when you should have had your last oil change. Because typically what we're going to do in the shop, we're going to add 3,000 miles to your current mileage. And that's the number. And then we're going to push it out three months too. So take a look and, and plan those. Look at the calendar right now. You know how many miles you drove last year probably and plan it out. And that way you can, you can, you can plan your year, plan your maintenance on your car. And you know, and you're not calling us on Christmas Eve because you're driving to Timbuktu and you need an oil change. That's not going to you know make the difference. So that would be my big one because the other thing that we've seen is besides the scheduling, Tim, we've seen cars with avoidable breakdowns 100% related to lack of oil changes. Correct, yes, yes. You know, those oil changes are very important. And especially if the, on a lot of these cars now, they're, the intervals for the manufacturer are for more than 7,500 miles. Twelve. Sometimes they're twelve, fifteen thousand. Yeah, and we need to see you at five thousand or seven hundred miles. We need to see the eyes on the car, and that can be that can prevent those those breakdown issues. Well, yeah, we we yeah, that's the biggest thing. Sometimes the oil is just fine, but it's the the, the Other qualified things. person that goes along with it. I extend my oil change. I use a really expensive synthetic oil. My windshield washer fluid never makes it through the oil service. My tires always need air. So stretching it, it's easy for me because the car's at the shop every day. But it's the other little things that go along with that that uh, you know make it give you the value. And the other thing that we're seeing is these cars with the extended oil change intervals, what are they doing? They're using oil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So even if you're we're um, finding a lot of Chevrolet trucks, uh, Volkswagens, even if you go to the... Some of those are 5,000. I know on the Volkswagen they're 5,000, and that's perfect if you're using the right synthetic oil. A lot of the Chevrolet or General Motors products, they use the oil life indicator. But you follow those, and we're getting people coming in with their oil light on, and they're low on oil. So let's shrink those oil change intervals. I think maybe the car should be in three times a year. What do you think, Tim? Yep, three times a year would be that would be the minimum, yeah. definitely. Yeah, three times and maybe uh, – Maybe, uh, you know, one other, maybe a pre-trip check or something like that. So, you know, one of the other ones I have on here is fix the dents. Yeah, those little dings in the doors and the bumpers. That's cheap now. We've got body shops on bumper to bumper radiocom listed There's that do this kind of paintless dent removal. A lot of people don't want to have that factory surface scratched or they're worried it's going to peel or chip. But my big thing is you, you, you do the uh, – you let that first scratch go. And then now you have five scratches. Yeah. And that first dent, it's not, oh, it's just a dent. And then the, and it's not a big deal and you get used to it. And then the second dent is less of a big deal. And now all of a sudden you've got this dented up, yeah. you know, dented up car. So I and think- yeah, and, they're, and they're, it's a lot less expensive than you think on these on, on these guys that will fix these dents for $100 a lot of times or less. Yeah, or you can get two or three of them or, or maybe it's $100, $150 and they cover the whole panel. So if it's one door, they take care of the whole thing. So that. That that's another really good one. So maybe you've got one you want to share with us. Any car questions, anything you want to talk about, again, you can give us a call at 
877-5827. Text 411-923. And don't be shy. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen here with Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service. Happy New Year. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Helping us out. Dave is out today. And I think I can say this. I don't think he cares. He had a little emergency. He had a little a little stomach problem. See, and he he blamed me. And I told him I wasn't going to go here, but maybe I will for just a second. See, I was sick. Um, right before Christmas. Right before Christmas. I mean, I was in bad shape. Dave and I actually went to lunch that Monday and... It was brutal. About an hour after leaving him, I was I was home. What do they say? Huggling the porcel- porcelain goddess. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I saw you. You didn't look the best. No, in the world. Uh, doing what a lot of people were probably doing New Year's Day, which I wasn't doing. I was in perfect shape. But uh, so Dave blamed me for getting him sick, and it turned out he had a little appendicitis. So he got his he a little surgery yesterday, in and out, and he's home and and uh, feeling good. So Dave will be back next week, and wish him well. I w- wish you well, Dave. But, uh, you know, Tim, we're again, there's these TV monitors in here, and we see all the snow. They're talking about tires and snow tires back east. We don't have to do that here. I, I don't want to have anything to do with snow. I used to live in the Washington, D.C. area, northern Virginia. I had a little Porsche 914. I remember coming out, sometimes that thing's just covered. Just, you just got to shovel out. And uh, just thankful we don't need to do that anymore. But the uh, tires are the important thing. We're talking about getting in for regular maintenance. It was was it Monday? One day this week, uh, there was a rollover out on 27th Avenue and I-10. Family of four, I think it was, in the car. Nobody had the seatbelts on except for the three-year-old child that was in the car seat, thankfully. All four were ejected, so they didn't have their seatbelts on. And or all three were ejected. The cause of the problem was a tire. So we've got to get keep these cars looked at to keep yourself safe, keep other people on the road safe. And, uh, you know, and when you're going on a road trip, I think, you know, we're driving around town, tires on the car, they're in good shape. And I was just thinking about this as I was watching the news the other day. When we go on a road trip, we've got luggage, we've got skis, we've got, you know, whatever we're going to. Sometimes extra people. More people typically than we have. And that's when we take everything to the limit on our car. So we, we just really want to avoid those situations if we can. So that New Year's resolution, again, look up at that oil change sticker on your window. If it's overdue, bumper to bumperradiocom If you don't have a shop, you can find one there and make your appointment. And if you're not even, if you're not even due for an oil change, just stop by your shop and have them look at your tires. Every, no, they're gonna, they're gonna, it's not going to take long. And they can check them out. They can check the pressures. And if they see a, some problem with it, they'll tell you. And that, that, then you'll have the peace of mind. I mean, in between your oil services, there's no reason that you don't have it. You can just stop by your shop and have them check those tires. Uh, and yeah. most cars now have the little... The TPMS, yeah. yeah. But, well, and that's true. That's part of having the relationship. We do it all the time. And we have... And I always make the point. People call and say, well, I want to... I'm going on a trip. I need an oil change. Now, at that point, I'd say, don't do an oil change. Just come in... Like full service, so to speak. We'll pull up, we'll check your tires, make sure the windshield washer fluid's full and the wipers and all those other little things, the basic things that we check with an oil change, and we'll make sure the oil's full. Then we'll service it when you get back, or better yet, just maybe rent a car. So uh, 602-277-5827, that's the number to call if you've got a question and you want to want us to help you and that's what we're here to do you can also text us at 411-923 so we're going to go with bill and mesa he's got a monte carlo 2005 monte carlo what can we help you with today bill i don't have anything with my car i just read an article in a magazine about the new mazdas that have atkinson cycle on the engine i never heard that before um, you know, I'd have to Google that. I was reading about that Atkins cycle engine um, the other day, and it's that it's that Mazda Sky Active technology is what that is. And and now I'm on the spot. I've been stumped. I had a customer the other day tell me, "You never get stumped." Well, <laughs> here I am stumped. It, it has something to do with the the way the engine cycles and the opening and closing of the valves. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I'm going to check on that. Uh, you know, during the during the break and see what uh, I'll I'll come back. Did you have another question about your car, Bill, or are you just commenting about that Mazda well, engine? The only other thing I was going to ask you is, what about these other cars that are coming out with the CVT transmission? And I'm I'm questioning that. Is that the same for gas mileage? I believe the CVT was for gas mileage, and I wish Dave was here to give his opinion. 
uh, because he is the transmission expert about the CVT transmissions, but I believe they're getting a lot better. Tim, you drive the Nissan Cube. It's got a CVT. It's I, I it, it just took a little bit longer to get used to because you don't feel the shift, but it's I I I, I like it. Well, well, what I've no, yeah, you don't feel the shift, so it's just like it winds. It's like it, it just it just it, it just winds up, and and the basics of a CVT CVT transmission. I guess it's like a bicycle. There's I'm going to probably butcher this, but there's a there's a larger gear in the front and a smaller one in the back where they're cone shaped. And as you speed up, the the chain or the belt moves or the the cone changes size front to back, just like shifting gears on a bicycle. Yeah, it's like I think it's and, a belt on the Nissan. Yeah, and I think they were a little bit troublesome. I think they had a bad stigma in the beginning, but uh, I think now they've got them pretty well squared away. So thanks for the call, Bill. We're going to take John in Chandler, but this is the John with the Corvette. John, what can we help you with on your vet today? Yes, I've got a 99 Corvette C5 automatic, and I bought it about three months ago, and I'm having a vibration problem uh, that kind of oscillates uh, 40 miles an hour, and it doesn't matter if you're doing 40, 50, all the way up to 80. You kind of get this vibration that looks like a sine wave where it, it vibrates a little and goes away, vibrates a little, goes away. So I replaced all four wheels since they were kind of dry rotted, uh, buying this vehicle that was sitting out. Uh, for three years. Mm -hmm. So there's Michelin Pilot Sports on it. I replaced the brakes, the rotors. I even put new shocks on it. And I'm thinking, would worn out bushings give me an oscillation like that on those A-arms? They, yeah, they could. Now, did, are you, is this a project that you're doing yourself, or did you have a, was, were these other things? I, I understand the tires <laughs> you're going to do and some shocks or, or, yeah. or was no, the pr yeah, it's all project car. Okay. Um, mice were living in the engine, oh, nice. and I got it at a good price, so I replaced everything, you know, water okay. pump, air conditioner, radiator. In fact, the radiator hoses and the radiator was still stamped December of 98. Mm -hmm. So somebody's never replaced any of that stuff. But uh, now brought it back to life. Um, everybody says it looks great. It's just that oscillation. I don't know if it's the leaf spring, if they ever wear out, or the bushings on A-arms would just kind of, yeah. yeah, I always just thought it was a wheel, but do, do wheels usually just kind of come and go during a certain speed. This yeah, one, yeah, you can drive through a tire balance issue usually. I mean, right. maybe how many miles are in this this Corvette? Uh, Ninety one thousand. Okay, so it's got some decent mileage on it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you could have a control arm bushing that's that's. Gosh, I don't know. You know, that's one of the things too. Noises in vibrations or feelings yeah. are so hard, even when we're at the counter talking with a customer they're very difficult to to get across so probably a test drive with somebody uh that's a little more familiar but control arm bushings drive shaft maybe all you know there's several different different uh things does, tim you had something. yeah does it change when you're driving and you're moving the wheel left or right no nothing in the front end the front end seems tight there's no um indication in the steering wheel that gives me up, up, you know, I could point a finger at from that steering wheel. It just seems to, like I said, it has an oscillation that vibrates four times, disappears, vibrates four times, and you just, you get this, and it doesn't matter at the speed. Okay. He said he had a new transmission put in it from the dealer because uh, it, it basically, I guess it was leaking or, or shot out. But well, John, here's what I would say to do. We'll, we'll never answer this over the phone. It's just, I mean, over the radio, it's very, very hard to do. Uh, near you, I don't know where you are in Chandler, but go to bumper to bumper .com and you'll find a shop in Chandler called ADS, Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. You could probably give them a call, take a time, set up a time with them, and go by and just ask them to take a test drive with you. I'm sure they'll do that and just see what they think, and then maybe you can go play with it and just tell them, hey, I want to try and fix this stuff myself. So give that a shot. We'll be right back. And if you want to get involved, 602 277 KTAR. Pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Well, good morning and happy new year and welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. Dave is off today out recovering from a little procedure. And uh, Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service is uh, here to help me out. So, Tim, thank you for... Uh, coming and helping us uh, answer some questions and give the feedback you're welcome and happy new year again to all, all the listeners out there and uh, glad we're here in arizona where it's going to be 71 degrees i'm looking outside right now and it's 
I'm just glad I'm not back in Connecticut. <laughs> there is no snow. Or Green Bay. Yeah, yeah, really, ex- exactly. I don't know how those people are going to watch football. I, you've got to be a, uh, a true, true football fan to uh, get out there. I mean, to me, it'd be the toes. I, you know, I can stay warm. I get a little extra insulation in the middle and everything else. But yeah, when your toes are cold, boy, the the toes are cold. So we've got some text messages. No, oh, by the way, if you want to uh, have a question, you want to get involved with the show, six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. You can text us at four one one ninety two three. I did not look up the Atkins motor. I did a little bit, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know enough about it yet to comment. So a couple of things on the Corvette question that we had a little bit ago. Um, again, we said go take it by ADS and let them drive it. Greg also has a drive shaft shop, so he's going to know. They're going to they're gonna be able to take care of that no matter what. But half shafts, or that car's got CV joints in the rear, or axle shafts, we call them half shafts. Drive shaft, there's a center support bearing that could possibly have a problem. Uh, you know, so a lot of different things there. So give them a chance to go drive that for you and, and see what's going on. Also had a couple text messages from Joel, one of the bumper to bumper shops at uh, Arizona Imports, and uh, he says Matt had two Volkswagens this week with no oil and bad motors. That's what we had. Yeah, that's a couple we tip, of those. yeah, we had a couple this week with uh, with a lack of oil and a lack of maintenance. And like, yeah, newer cars too. So and. and not always the customer's fault. Maybe they're going to a shop and they're putting the wrong oil in the car because they've got the 20 buck oil change. And, and, and that's a, a thing that we see in a lot of these cars, Tim. People have a little sticker shock when they come in for an oil change now. This is not a, a even a 92 Oldsmobile or a Honda. I mean, they're coming out with a 0, 016 weight oil now. Uh, most cars, you get a Hyundai now. We used to think of a Hyundai, at least I did back in the 80s. What a piece of junk. Those are great cars. Yeah, they build a great car now. Those are awesome. But they're but taking a different great oil. Premium fuel. Premium fuel in them. Yeah, there's, so so there's... there's there's um, So be careful on those 1995 oil services. Yeah, yeah, big be, time. Be aware. Yeah, I mean, your Volkswagen synthetic oil, you're going to spend 60 bucks. Yeah, to, but Exactly. To do it right. Another one in here. I have an 04 Lincoln Unlimited with 89,000 miles. Worth how much? I don't know. Kill you are. Go to uh, Craigslist.com. Go to the, uh, what is it, Auto Trader, Kelly Blue Book. You can look it up in the Blue Book, and that's one thing. But, and then reality is the other. What are they selling for? That's usually the best indicator. Go see what the car is worth. And if the AC works. Yeah. Yeah, big time. So we're going to hold off on some text because these people are on hold. We've got John... Bill and Francis waiting, and Juan and Wayne out there too. So John and Chandler, we're going to try and help you with your 93 Mustang. What can we do for you? I've been having a little issue uh, with the emissions. Uh, my car has been stored. Uh, when I say stored, it has, I, I come back and I, you know, start it every now and then for the last, you know, probably year and a half. Now I bought it new, and up until up until. You know, recently the the car has passed emissions with no problem whatsoever. I've got a supercharger and some other mods on there, but no matter what, it's always passed. Unfortunately, this time it failed the Knox uh, uh, the Knox test. It, it was off maybe a couple tenths, and uh, I've heard everything from you know it could be catalytic uh, catalytic converter uh, to oxygen sensors and things. So. My my major question is, you know, is there some things I could do, you know, right now before, you know, I probably take it to a shop, maybe the less expensive route, and then of course, you know, if it is replacing the converters, then you know, I guess that's what yeah. I have to do. Yeah, you can. There there's several things that you can do, and Knox failures are not typically not that hard to fix. the The one thing you need to do is go back to the emission station or call them. And you want to get the drive cycle of, of the, the test. So they'll give you a bar graph or not, a, a, a chart that shows all the gases and all the speed in your acceleration and where exactly the car failed. So we can look at this. Like looking at an EKG, I guess. We know exactly what's happening and when. And, and NOx is a byproduct of combustion. So you, um, and it's from a high cylinder temperature. So it's going to happen from pinging. And you're going to get pinging from maybe bad gas or low octane fuel. You're going to get pinging from an EGR valve that's not working properly, or you're going to maybe have carbon buildup in the engine. And then it's the catalytic converter's job to clean up that mess. 
Uh, on those Mustangs, it's got four catalytic converters, that big H pipe, so you don't want to have to replace that. The oxygen sensors typically are not going to have an effect there because it would make it, unless it was causing the car to run re- very lean, that's also going to cause a high cylinder temperature. Some things that you can do, maybe put some premium fuel in it. Go to Chevron and get a bottle of Tecron. That's the additive that goes in the gas tank. There's some other products that clean carbon, like uh, BG has a product. You can get that at Napa, I think, or they have Liquid Molly. Put that in, and if you're very, very close... Just go drive the heck out of the car for a little bit and then take it in, and it might just pass. It might be worth that $27.75 wasting that test and just see. And then if not, you're in Chandler. Today is Greg's day at ADS. They can run that car in their chassis dyno. They can do whatever. They can fix that car without any issues at all. So that that's what I would do, John. So Bill and Anthem has a Mercedes, a 98E350. Bill, how can we help you today? Yeah, good morning. I uh, have a Mercedes 98. It's a E320. Okay. And it's got about 50,000 miles on it. And recently, uh, the car runs really rough when it's cold. And it's in drive. I can leave the house. Uh, the engine runs smooth. I put it in, in reverse. It runs smooth. I get to the first stop sign and have to stop. The, the whole engine shakes, and the, I have to put it in neutral. And then it runs smooth again. No, uh, no warning lights on the dash? No, no warning lights of any kind. Okay. The longer I drive, I've taken it to the Mercedes dealer. Of course, by the time I got there, the car is warmed up. They don't see anything wrong. Right. So I thought maybe transmission, because it's in gear. Well, let me ask you this. Do you see any fluid leaks underneath the car or even any stains on the driveway, like black nope, marks? N- none at all. I've got a, uh, a garage with epoxy floor, and it's, you know, we scrub it like a, like a kitchen, your kitchen floor, and I'd notice <laughs> any drops. There's no leaks, no drips. Okay. Well, my initial thought, I was thinking an engine mount. And the reason I asked you about the engine mount or about the fluid is because those are liquid-filled engine mounts more likely on that car. And they will start to leak out. The The rubber deteriorates and the, the liquid leaks out and you'll see black stains on the floor or we can see the black stains running down the, uh, the, the frame rail on the car. So that was my initial thought. And I continue to think that still because you said you put it in neutral and it takes the, the vibration away. That's taking the load off of the engine. So I'm really thinking an engine mount issue. I don't think it's running bad. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. I haven't driven the car. But those are pretty sophisticated. Even in 98, I would think that they would pick up a cylinder misfire. Tim, I don't know yeah. if you have any thoughts. I mean, yeah, if it, was a, if it was a spark plug or a cylinder misfire, I would check engine. It would come on. I'm thinking of something uh, towards an engine mount, too. Well, and the other thing, same with the, the gentleman with the Mustang. You know, you've only got 50,000 miles in this 1998 car. Maybe you're a part-timer here in the Valley. And uh, maybe... You're, Maybe that car just needs to be run, you know? It's like a horse. It wants to – a racehorse. It wants to go. So, Bill, maybe go – that car should have premium fuel in it. Fill the thing with gas. Again, try – go to – you need to be using good gas to a, a, a Chevron or a QT. Costco has great gas. But – um fill that thing up. Put an, an additive in it. Again, there's only two or three that I like. Tecron, BG, or a product called Liquimoly, and even Seafoam. Put a tank of that in and head north. Go up the hill. Go up to uh, Sunset Point and turn around. Just romp it, you know. Waterline getting a speeding ticket maybe. And and if you can run that thing, it might just clear it up a little bit. Try that, and and, and maybe that'll 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 work for you. And and if not, uh, give us a call back. We can help you. You can send us an email at bumper to bumper radio dot com, and maybe we can help get you pointed to somebody that can help help you. So we're gonna go with Juan in Phoenix real quick on a two thousand and four Chrysler Sebring. Juan, how can we ha- try and help you today? How are you doing today? Good. <clears throat> yeah, I've been having uh, issues with the. Uh, we they couldn't get my car started. Uh, I took it to a shop. Uh, they try to put a new uh, ECU in there, a computer, and uh, they they never fixed it, so they just gave me my money back. Uh, I took it to some other guys, and they said they uh, it was an issue with the original computer, so they got it running. And I took it home, and now uh, I have issues with acceleration. You know, it starts up fine. Um, it's just like uh, I can't put the gas in all the way. I have to just kind of go slow. If not, it starts kicking back. And then I could go only as far as uh, 65 miles per hour 
and they won't go anymore after that. They'll okay. start kicking back. Well, the first question is always, do you have a check engine light on? That's the, the first thing. Any service engine soon or any warning light on the dash? <clears throat> yeah, it's given me something that I, I've dealt with in the past uh, about the cam cam sensor position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had changed that, too. <clears throat> I pretty much changed all the sensors that have to deal with that right. crankshaft sensor. Well, if it's if it's if it's throwing a code for a a camshaft, it could be a phase a phase code or a sensor. I mean, just because you have a code for a sensor doesn't necessarily mean that that sensor is bad. It's just something in that circuit is out of range. Um, you could very well have a mechanical issue. We've one of the cars we worked on this week. It it had a, a camshaft issue. There were some problems that would have affected that with some variable valve timing. We got those squared away, and the car still had some issues. And then, so we had to go to the mechanical side of things. It's nothing electronic. Go to the mechanical side, and we find the timing chain's not lined up properly. It had skipped a tooth. So that could be happening on your Sebring. I believe that car has a timing belt. So you may want to start with getting, go back to the basics, the mechanical. Get the thing lined up on top dead center, number one cylinder, and make sure the camshaft is properly lined. You're probably going to have to pull some covers if you're capable of doing that to access the timing belt. I think it's pretty cumbersome on that car. Maybe worth going back to the shop. At least they got it running for you. The other thing I was going to think about, the way you talked about not accelerating over 65 miles an hour, could be a catalytic converter issue. Maybe the exhaust sounds a little bit funny. Or you could have two things. Maybe the camshaft has been off and it's it's pumping oil or, or pumping hydrocarbons and not running well and uh, maybe ruin the catalytic converter that way. So, so not really sure, but maybe give the shop another chance. Check with the mechanical timing and, and see if that's working. So hopefully that helps you, Juan. Greg, Francis, and Wayne, we're going to get you right after the break. We'll be right back. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. All righty, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service is here to help me today and keep us uh, keep the keep the flow going, right, Tim? Keep the flow going and uh, keep just enjoying this weather out here in Phoenix. Is that, is that Chubby Checker in the background there? I think that was is Chubby that, Checker. Uh, yes. Chuck Berry. Oh, Chuck oh, Berry. Chuck, oh, Thanks, yeah. Peter. Chuck Berry. Chuck. I, I had to fight with him for a minute. To, I think he was over talking me. <laughs> but uh, so again. Every Saturday, Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're here to help you with your car. A lot of a lot of good questions today, huh, Tim? Yeah, a lot of great questions from the listeners. Hey, it, you know it. You know it's it. <laughs> I'm standing here. You're sitting. I'm standing. We're uh, you get these questions. It's almost like we're standing at the service desk at the shop. Yeah, I mean, this is what happens in the morning. You come in. People are, oh, I've got this, I've got that. We talk about it briefly at the counter, tell them what we're going to do, how we're going to check the car, kind of vet some of these things out. So it's it's fun having you here. Uh, well, so, thank you. It's, been, it's always enjoyable coming here. I appreciate you coming. We're going to do fact or fiction right now. I don't have uh, Dave here to run the, the, the funky dials and all that stuff that make the noise, but we're, we're, uh, we're not going to do the, the production part. But the fact or fiction is running – or using premium fuel in my car is better for my car, Tim. Uh, it's kind of like a trick question. Um, <laughs> I, knew a, I knew you'd do that. <laughs> I, I, it's 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 fiction, but it's also fact if your car requires it. Yes. So yeah, the bottom line is, look at your owner's manual or look on the inside door on the inside of the door of your gas cap, the gas cap door. There's probably going to be a sticker that tells you what fuel to use. If it says use high octane, use high octane. If it doesn't, don't. Yeah, because using the high octane fuel in a like a '92 Oldsmobile is going to be detrimental to the engine. You well, know? It's, it's just it's a waste. It's a waste of money, it, and it could actually make you get worse fuel mileage. And even if it's a 2012 car, if it doesn't take require premium, don't waste your money on it. But if it does, you want to use that. And then make sure you're, you are using a top-tier fuel. And that's that's a fuel that's got the additives in it. That that uh, used to be people think you need premium fuel because that's where the additives are. Well, the additives that remove the carbon and help prevent carbon buildup are in all the grades now. QT, Costco, Circle K because it has Shell, Chevron Texaco for sure. I'm probably missing a few others. Uh, yeah, just, but, get the, just get the right fuel in your car. Yeah. Definitely. So we're going to go with Francis in Mesa, who's been waiting very patiently on a 2004 Hyundai Sonata. Francis, how can we help you today? 
Yeah, I need help. I, I need to get an oil change. I have 30,000 miles on my car. I don't drive it that much. And I need to get it detailed, preferably at the same place. I live near Brown and uh, Country Club, so something close in Mesa that you would recommend. Well, I'm going to recommend that you not get your detail and your oil change done at the same place. Because that, to me, sounds like a lot like the car wash. And, oh, and, okay. <laughs> and and I, maybe I wouldn't do that. You've got uh, you've got a, a an old, a, a very young car. The car, I mean, it's ten years old. That that in a in in this era of automobile, that thing's a baby, especially with the only thirty thousand miles on it. It probably doesn't need a whole bunch of repairs. Needs a good oil change. There might be some fluids that need some service, just based on the age. And depending on how you're driving the car, maybe like the antifreeze, that would be about the only one. Maybe the brake fluid. Maybe the cabin air filter. Yeah, yeah, possibly, depending on how the car is being used. But go get your service done. Go to bumper to bumper and you'll find his shop. Uh, Accurate Automotive, I think, is close by there. We've got Mesa Auto Works in Mesa. I think they're a little bit further away from you. Try one of those two and then ask them who would you go to for a detail? And I guarantee you that they know somebody. Or if they don't, then go to the car wash grand complex where they do the details and all that other stuff and, and let them detail your car. That would be my best advice for you. And so thanks for the call, Francis. Wayne has also been extremely patient today. Wayne is in Cave Creek with a 99 Ford Taurus. Wayne, what can we help you with? Oh, yes. I My uh, windshield wipers come on erratically. Sometimes you can drive a couple of miles and they'll just come on once. Uh, sometimes... You can drive a mile and they'll stay on for a while. And no rhyme or reason, it just kind of happens. It just no, no, it's no, not. It, it, there's no rhyme or reason. This happens. Okay. And it's not dependable. Just sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. I believe on that Taurus, the windshield wipers turn on on the switch on the steering column. Where the is it the same handle as the turn signal? Does it twist yes, or is yes, it, on it is. The, okay? Is that signal switch? Does it seem like it's nice and tight and firm, or is it a little bit sloppy and worn out? Mm, it hard? I have noticed it being loose. Okay, well, you know, you could have a problem with what we would call the multifunction switch. Uh, that's the the turn signal switch, the high beam, low beam switch. It's it's everything there in the steering column. I'd be thinking that possibly a relay. And really the way that someone's going to find this is by going, looking at a wiring diagram, it's just like a road map. How does the power get there? And, and what, what connection is happening automatically here? A shorted wire, relay, something in the wiper motor itself? Uh, it's hard to say, but... Um, just gonna have to. That's one of those things where there's no. Just gonna have to go to a shop and have them take a look at it. And uh, in Cave Creek, I don't. I don't. Uh, we don't have a bumper to bumper shop. You might try Combs Auto Repair, depending on where you are in Cave Creek. They're up there at. Uh, where are they, Tim? You no, know Mark no. Combs, uh, <clears throat> Scottsdale Road in Adobe. I want to say kind of around Pinnacle Peak. I think so. That might be a good shop for you. If not, send us an email at bumper to bumper radio dot com, and we can make you. A, a uh, personal referral. So thanks for the call, Wayne. We are very quickly going to go with Greg from Peoria on a 1997 Wrangler. Greg, what can we help you with? Hey, thanks, guys, for taking my call. I get, like I said, I have a 97 Jeep Wrangler. I've got 410,000 miles on it, Ooh, and that always was using the lowest grade and cheapest gas I could get. Wait a minute. i got to stop you for a second. How did? What's the secret to getting to 410,000 miles? Were you towing it around the country, or were you actually driving it? I, you know, I, I, I drive the hell out of it. I probably put um, 2,000, 3,000 miles a month, most of it highway miles. I worked for a, a number of years up in northern Arizona, so there's weekly trips up, um, you know, trips to Rocky Point, San Diego, all around. But uh, it's a lot of highway miles. It's, it's the original engine. Everything around it I've replaced multiple times, you know, pumps and hoses and all that other stuff. But here's my question for you. So the lockup, I had the torque, I had the transmission rebuilt about 150,000 miles ago, and I've noticed the last few months the lockup comes and goes um, at highway speeds and just even around town. And I checked the brake pedal to make sure the little actuator wasn't, you know, out of alignment or something. It's not that. And then about a month ago, the engine light came on, and I carry a code reader, and it was for the um, something electrical with the lockup itself. 
So that told me that's probably what it is. And my question is, is that something that I could replace, or am I better off going to a transmission shop? So the only reason I've got this many miles is I do most of the work myself. Right. Well, I think that's really awesome that you made it to that many miles. That's really cool. This, I doubt that you can do the torque converter yourself or the lockup solenoid. I wish Dave was here today to help us with that question. I don't know. But if you would, send us an email. Go to bumper to bumper radiocom Go to the contact link and put in that you have a transmission question. And Dave will get that email, and he will be able to, to guide you through that. And if it's something you can do yourself, and he... I mean, you clearly can do stuff if you're mechanically inclined. Dave will probably help walk you through that or get you started at least and, and, and give you a, a hand up. So, well, we appreciate the call, Greg. We appreciate everybody that uh, communicated with us today by calling in, sending us text messages. And, and really, this show is about you. So anytime you want to get involved, send us an email, give us a call, send a text message during the show, and we're going to help you out. Peter, thanks for always running the dials and keeping us on time. Tim, thanks for coming and helping us. You're welcome. Dave, we'll see you next week, and we'll be back Saturday at 11.